Bonjour et bienvenue à la classe d'induction pour. Euh... So, welcome to your induction lesson. So, I will try during this lesson to um, do three things. Number one, um, if you're here, I suppose I don't need to convince you, but I need to reassure you that choosing French um, for A level is the right choice. Number two, I want to just let you know what you're going to be doing for the next two years. And number three, I want to give you a little bit of a sample of a lesson. Obviously, um, the fact that we are not in class is making it a little bit more difficult. But I will show you a couple of activities that um, will represent the, the kind of thing that we would do um, in lesson. So to start off with, le monde de la francophonie. French is um, a language that is spoken very widely throughout the world. As you can see, Canada um, in Africa, an awful lot in the old French colonies, um, which is something that we speak about in year 13. Um, then also in the Dom Tom, le domaine d'outre-mer et le um, territoire d'outre-mer et les, les départements d'outre-mer comme Madagascar, la Guadeloupe, la Martinique, et euh, dans certains pays, donc de... Sorry, just switched to French there. And in some countries of Eastern Europe, uh, Laos and Vietnam. Okay. So why learn French? Very good question. Well, the fact is that more than 220 million people speak French throughout the world. So that is, if nothing else, a very good reason. Um, I'm not entirely sure about this fact because I do think that they count people that are just crossing France to go somewhere else. But it is undeniable that France is an extremely um, visited and popular country with tourists. Um, it is probably going to surprise you that French is the third most widely used language on the internet ahead of Spanish. So that is another reason why learning French can be very useful. Um, learning French will improve your English. I can guarantee you that is true because during lessons very often I find myself teaching English vocabulary because um, the French is quite close to some of the, let's say, less used English words um, in the vocabulary. Um, then, obviously, you got to understand that French is a working and official language for a lot of organisations. And if you do plan on working for any of those, um, you will need to be speaking French. Being able to speak French will open a lot of higher education doors. It might sound weird to say that, but if you were desperate to get into Oxford or Cambridge, you will find that it is probably easier to get in with French because unfortunately it's become less popular than it is for um, studying English, for example. Okay. Now, if you're here and if you're listening to this, you will know that learning French is actually also a pleasure. It's a beautiful language. I am French myself, so I'm not... Um, really able to judge how beautiful it is but people often tell me that it is um, very very pretty even prettier than Italian which I find difficult to believe as I love the sound of Italian and you just cannot argue with that Paris is one of the most beautiful cities in the world I think um, um, it's not just me being biased it is extremely okay some pictures to prove that um, Paris is full of history, full of culture, and it is a, a beautiful city to just walk around. Why learn French? Um, another word um, that comes from, um, well, that is very similar to the French, I don't know if it comes from the French as such, la gastronomie, okay? Who doesn't like French food? Croissant, baguette, macaron, crepe. I must say that I still um, miss, after more than 20 years of being in France, I still really miss French bread and proper croissant. I know the British try to imitate, but I'm sorry to say, it's just not quite the same. Okay. Um, 
The link below uh, will probably not work um, if I do it um, um, as a uh, recording. So I will include this PowerPoint for you to have a look at and you can then watch the videos. It's a few students telling us why they think that um, learning French or a language is a very good and if you're not convinced yet, um, a few more things. Yes, believe it or not, um, people that speak another language are regarded as sexier than those who can speak only English. If that was the only um, uh, reason, I think that's a good enough reason to learn another language. Okay, And also, on a more practical aspect, if you have a language skill, that you can add to your other skills, it will make your salary more substantial. Okay, now you have been given or forwarded your induction booklet. This is a bit like your Bible um, for you to sort of learn everything there is to know about the next couple of years. Um, I'm going to go through the main points. Um, of this induction booklet to um, go through what we're doing next year. The topic um, for year 12 are divided between two teachers. Um, we, for a while now, we have been teaching that way. So Madame Proctor, who teaches French um, throughout um, Key Stage 3, Key Stage 4, um, is going to be doing three topics that I will uh, go through in a second. And myself, Miss O, or Madame Okio uh, will be doing the other three. Okay, so Madame Proctor will cover module one, aspects of French speaking society, the current trends. And that comprises the changing nature of family. It's talking about family, but not in the way you've been doing it at GCSE. It's more sort of uh, analysing the trends and how family is changing in France and in French-speaking countries. Talking about the role of grandparents, um, talking about um, the life of a couple. She will also cover cyber society. And again, it's not quite the same as doing technology um, in your um, GCSE, it's uh, a lot more in depth and a lot more interesting. Okay, and finally, she will cover the place of voluntary work, le rôle du bénévolat, um, and talk about uh, where are um, who who are the the voluntary workers, what do they do, and what is um, what, what is the use of um, of them basically. I will cover the artistic culture in the French-speaking world and Madame Proctor usually helps me with this topic, which is weirdly the last one that we do, um, a culture I'm proud of its heritage. Uh, we talk about heritage and what it means and um, how it reflects culture. Uh, we also talk about music, uh, francophone music, by francophone, it's any French-speaking music. So we talk about uh, music in France and we talk about music in Africa and um, what um, France does to to um, to keep its music because, as you can imagine, um, British and American music are very popular in France. And cinema. Uh, weirdly enough, we start with cinema because uh, cinema is um, linked to another thing that we do um, in year 12. So in the, this topic, we uh, talk about um, the evolution of cinema. We talk about how, you know, the importance of French cinema and, and what it represents in France. As that is linked to something else we do in year 12, which is studying a film. Uh, the film we study is La Haine. I would ask you not to watch this film before the course. I quite like to just um, make you discover the film, analysing the theme, scenes as we go along. So it's quite important not to know the end before we get there, because it can then be probably a lot more um, uh, appreciated, if that's the word, than if you've seen the film before. Um, I'm going to go through year 13 quickly and the topic areas for year 13. 
aspect of French speaking society's current issues. So the first thing that we do in year 13 is talk about uh, multiculturalism. We sometimes cover that a little bit at the end of year 12 if we have time, it depends on the years. Uh, we talk about marginalised people and we talk about the way criminals are treated um, and about prisons and different types of punishment, different types of crime. Um, I do this section and I usually start with the life of the marginalised because it links very well to the book that we study in year 13. I will come to that in a second. The module is aspect of political life in the French-speaking world. So teenagers, right to vote, political commitment, demonstrations and strikes and politics and immigration, which links very well to multiculturalism. Um, so the book that we are studying is called No Imwa, uh, and as I said, it links really well to the marginalised um, topic that we study, which is one of the reasons why um, I've chosen it. The other reason being that um, it is a fairly contemporary um, um, contemporary book, but um, also it, um, it's not very long and students generally find it very interesting. Okay, so on to assessment. Now there are three papers that are assessed at the end of year 13. The A level is linear. You have noticed, I hope at the beginning, that it is with AQA. So if you need any more information, you can always look at the specifications on the internet. So there are three papers, one, two, and Paper one is called Listening, Reading and Writing. Although the writing is not um, an essay or anything like that, the writing is translation and it is also summaries. Um, what is assessed is the, the topics that you have studied and obviously grammar. You will notice looking at this slide that it represents 50% of the A-level, which is an awful lot, um, but it is quite understandably the most important, uh, well, they're not the most important skills. I think for you, the most important skill is speaking, but listening and reading probably come straight after that. Writing, um, interestingly, the only writing that you do is two essays in two hours, and you do one essay on the film that you have um, studied, and one essay on the book. So one essay on that end, one essay on no emoi. And writing is 20% of your A level, so they're not the skills not equally weighted because um, writing is probably. The, the least weighted skill um, at A level, not that it's the least important, but it is maybe less important if you're going to go to France. The first thing you want to do is not to write, it's probably more to speak. The third um, exam that you will have is the speaking exam. And it's got two parts in it. One of the parts is um, you will be given a card, uh, actually a choice of two cards, which is quite nice. Um, and you can um, choose one of these cards and talk about the topic that the card is based on. And the second part of the speaking is the individual research project. Now, you don't need to worry about that quite yet. I usually launch it towards the end of year 12 or even sometimes the beginning of year 13. You basically need to do some research on something that is related to France or to a French-speaking country exclusively. It cannot be something that is very generic, like you can't just speak about abortion. If you were to choose that as a topic that you want to talk about, it would have to be abortion, but specifically in France or in a French-speaking country. Um, it's assessed... It might look a little bit scary at this stage to look at 21 to 23 minutes of oral exam. Now, first of all, that includes five minutes of preparation time, okay? And secondly, you will be extremely well prepared for the speaking exam, um, as well as having nine lessons a fortnight of French with myself and Madame Proctor, you will have 
also um, half an hour a week with our language assistant, Pauline, who is very friendly and extremely good. Um, this part of the exam, as I said, represents 30% of the A-level, so it is quite an important part of it. Now, at the very back of your, um, of your induction booklet, you will find a summer homework, and it's really important that you start looking at that now, because some of it is expected to be done for the beginning of September. So I'll go through each task and I will tell you what needs to be done quickly and what can be left for later in the year. So the speaking, um, the first section is really important because it is going to be not our first lesson, but probably our second or our third lesson together. I will ask you to speak about a photograph that you're going to bring into class um, that is basically telling us about something you've done or seen over the summer break. Um, the second um, section, the research, your French region, that is not urgent. Um, you won't be doing that until probably Easter of next year, so that you've got a little bit of time for that. And actually, you can't really prepare for that um, straight away because you haven't been given a region and I don't really want 10 people to all do the same region so it's important that we make sure all the regions are covered within the class. The next section called grammar is crucial that you um, revise uh, this section before the beginning of September because Madame Proctor will test you um, sometime in September on the essential grammar tenses that are in the booklet and other points of grammar, just basic grammar, basically, all GCSE, nothing new at this stage. The next two sections, the first one is choose a particular song and prepare a worksheet. That will be linked to our topic on music, so that will be the second topic that you will study with me. And it will be after studying the film. So, again, you've got a little bit of time. It's probably not going to happen until January or February. The next section, watch a film you haven't seen before and make a poster, however, is going to be something that I will ask you in our first topic. Um, so that will be good to have it ready for September. We also want you to have... Um, an article that you will have uh, ready for your first lesson with the language assistant and that is usually at the beginning of October. Um, I would strongly recommend that you spend some time or between now and the beginning of September um, just being in touch with your French. I know it sounds weird to say it like that but I don't want you to have six weeks uh, or actually more in this case, where you're not doing any French at all. You will be struggling if you do that. It will be, um, it will be a struggle because you will be all rusty. So make sure you watch films, that you watch series, that you listen to music, all of that in French. And you can always say to your parents that you are watching TV and that is homework, you know, it's quite nice. TV5 is a very good um, uh, TV online and it has got an awful lot of um, information on it that you can, uh, articles to read, loads and loads of things. Okay, we talked about regions in France. I'd like you to try and test yourself a little bit. How many regions in France do you know? What's in the east, in the north, in the south and in the west? Try to see if you can complete some of these before looking at the next slide which will give you all the answers so you might want to pause now and you might want to um, try and fill them in before you look at the answers okay the answers are now here um, so you will notice that there are um, 13 regions in France and they have actually recently, or well, fairly recently, been re, um, reallocated, if you want. Uh, we had two regions, for example, in Alsace-Lorraine before, and there was a third one called Champagne-Ardennes. So now they've sort of um, 
regrouped several old regions and made a bigger one. Uh, this is the region I come from, the Lorraine, Alsace-Lorraine, so I'm quite familiar with it. But a lot of you will be familiar with Brittany, Normandy, North Pas-de-Calais. In the France is where Paris is, it's not an island, um, it's just called like that. And then you've got um, the, the southern um, regions where, again, I'm guessing that you might be more familiar with. Um, uh, Auvergne, Rhône, Alpes, that's where you will go skiing. Provence, Alpes, Côte d'Azur, you can still go skiing there, but you probably will go to the beach um, in this area. Then you've got Languedoc, Roussillon, Midi-Pyrénées, with Toulouse as its uh, capital. And then you've got Aquitaine, Limousin, Poitou-Charente, with Bordeaux. And in the centre, you have got the Pays de la Loire, Centre-Val de Loire. You've got, we'll find all the, um, all the um, um, Chateau de la Loire in that area. And then Bourgogne, Franche Comté, some very nice wine coming from there. And let's not forget Corsica, La Corse, at the bottom, which is an island that belongs to France. Okay, so I hope um, you have got a good overview of the course for Year 12 and 13, as well as being now even more convinced that you're doing the right thing by choosing to study French next year. If we were face to face, I would ask you if you had any questions, because we can't do that now, we'll do it at the beginning of September. Okay, and um, what I would like to do now is to run through, maybe, again, that's going to be difficult, but I will just run through some activities um, that you would be doing, kind of activities you would be doing in class. Um, it's very important to realise that when we start A-level, uh, we as teachers will speak um, not exclusively, but an awful lot in French. Uh, some students, quite a lot of students have told me in the past, um, in sort of December, January, during the parents' evening, they've said, Miss, at the beginning, I couldn't understand a word you were saying. And... I always smile at this stage because I like the next bit because usually they say, but now I understand an awful lot more. Okay, so the, the, we can't do an immersion with you um, because obviously you'd have to be in front to be immersed, but that's the closest we can do is to speak as much French as possible and to try and get you used to the sound, to the speed, to... Um, all these things, and then um, you become more and more fluent over the two years. Okay. Um, again, uh, maintenant, donc on va commencer la leçon. Donc on va parler en français. Et uh, ici, je vous demanderai donc de me dire quel est le mot représenté par les chiffres 2, 6, 6, 5, 6, 8, 7. Donc vous pouvez maintenant poser la vidéo et essayer de, de deviner. Euh, je vais vous donner la réponse. Alors posez avant si vous ne voulez pas la réponse. Ok Donc 2, ça peut être A, B ou C. 2, c'est B. 6, ça peut être M, N ou O. Et ici, c'est O. 6 à nouveau, ce sera maintenant N. 5, ça va être J. Vous avez deviné Oui, bien sûr. C'est le mot « bonjour ». Ok um, On essaye de vous faire réfléchir et utiliser donc toutes ces cellules que vous avez dans votre cerveau en même temps qu'on vous enseigne le français. Ok On va parler un petit peu des jeunes et de leurs priorités. Ok Donc, um, quand on avance, il faudra peut-être que vous posiez la vidéo Um, pour uh, faire les activités si vous voulez les faire. Alors d'abord, uh, je vous ai donc donné une feuille avec du vocabulaire. C'est du vocabulaire que um, si vous étiez en classe, je vous demanderai de l'apprendre à deux en vous interrogeant l'un et l'autre. C'est tout du vocabulaire qui est lié donc um, au monde des jeunes. Donc, passez un peu de temps à apprendre le vocabulaire, s'il vous plaît. On revient, regardez un peu l'amour. Si on est heureux, 
en général, c'est que l'amour va bien, l'amitié va bien, les études vont bien. Ok. Bonheur, pour moi, c'est ce qu'il y a de plus important. Beaucoup d'étudiants mettent la famille ou euh, même des fois le sport. C'est tout à fait votre choix tant que vous pouvez le justifier. Ok. Alors ici, euh, on écouterait normalement une vidéo, mais je ne suis pas sûre que ça marche quand on est enregistré. Donc à nouveau, je vais vous envoyer la présentation. Et vous demandez donc de regarder la vidéo vous-même. Ce serait un exercice d'écoute. C'est quoi le plus important dans la vie d'un homme d'après le Dalai Lama? Ok, donc écoutez et essayez de euh, comprendre ce qu'il dit. Alors maintenant un petit peu de grammaire. C'est masculin ou c'est féminin? Euh, alors, tout d'abord, le premier mot, environnement, masculin ou féminin? Oui, vous avez raison, c'est masculin. Ok? Tous les mots qui finissent en ment sont masculins. Consultation, masculin ou féminin? Féminin. Tous les mots qui finissent en sion sont féminins. Ok? Messagerie. Féminin, distribution, féminin, sécurité, féminin, ingénieur, masculin, époque, féminin, accessoire, masculin, déchet, masculin, ouverture, féminin, manège, masculin. Attitude, féminin, cœur, masculin, armée, féminin. Um, à nouveau, tous les mots qui finissent en et, e, um, en général, sont féminins. Il y a quelques exceptions. Uh, il y a un mot que vous connaissez très bien qui finit en et, e et qui est masculin. Vous vous souvenez Oui, le musée. Okay, le musée est une exception à cette règle, c'est masculin. Aliment, we've talked about all the words that end in man, it is masculin. Bicyclette, bicyclette is féminin, et you'll find that all the words that end in et um, will be féminin. You've noticed that as I was um, doing grammar, that's the grammar section of our um, short lesson today, Um, you will notice that I switch virtually automatically to English. We tend to explain the grammar in English because we feel that it's crucial that you understand everything that is happening. Um, therefore, um, we, we make sure by teaching it in English that, that um, you will understand everything. Okay, And then obviously that's the time when you can ask questions in English as well. Okay, well, I hope that I have um, covered the three points that I wanted to make. Okay, I hope that I have uh, convinced you that you were um, making the right decision by choosing to learn French next year. I hope that I have explained to you and that you've understood what the next two years um, have got in um, store for you. And I hope to have given you a very, well, it is a bit of a short lesson. But a, a short sample of what a lesson would be like um, next year. Okay, um, I'm looking forward to seeing you next year in September. Hopefully, we will not be um, doing lessons online. We will be doing them in person. That's that's what I'm really hoping for. Um, and it will be obviously more interactive, and uh, and you'll be able to ask any questions on this that you haven't had answered. Okay, have a lovely summer. Don't forget your summer homework. Listen to a lot of French. Try and speak as much French as you can if you manage to go to France. And um, best of luck and I will see you um, hopefully in September.